St. John, like, um, what, was, what was the inspiration behind this character? Well, a few things. He's, he's broken. So you saw from a couple of trailers that we've released that he's lost someone and it scarred him in a way. And, it, and it's yeah. like Jeff would like to say, right. we all, everybody loses people, yeah. you know, in these kinds of end of the world scenarios. So what, what's particular about Deacon, though, is that he was, in, he was a ex member of an outlaw motorcycle club. And therefore, he has a love of the open road. He has a love of motorcycles. Yeah. There's a sense of brotherhood. And you can see that here in these scenes with him and his best friend, Boozer. Um, and so it was that combination that we really, that really sort of drew us to this particular character. Sure. Right. We're going to continue to learn about him as you're playing the game, correct? About him and his backstory and why he is the way he is. I mean, the bike is very important, right, as well? Like... Yeah, we almost consider the bike to be another character. Yeah because you only get one, and you're constantly upgrading it, you're constantly trying to repair it, you need to keep it refueled, and if you lose it, you gotta go find it, and you gotta, and you, you know, you can't whistle for a new one, so, <laughs> you can't yeah. right? Like so, a horse. Right. Yeah, the refueling mechanic is a huge game design choice. I really, really like that. Can you talk more about how important it's gonna be to be able to find fuel? Sorry. <laughs> so the refueling mechanic, and actually, you have to find gas to keep your bike going. It's a mechanic we haven't really seen done to this extent before. Can you talk more about that and how it changes the gameplay? Well, like in this demo, one of the things that Jeff, Jeff's taking the run and gun approach. So we, we like to call it um, uh, sandbox combat. So basically what you can do is you can run and gun, you can stealth your way through, and you, your goal here is to get and find a bike part, right? So you're here actually for kind of a trivial reason. You've risked your friend's life to come and get a part for your bike. And so that shows a little bit about Deacon's character. But then as, as you watch Jeff play through, through this wide linear sequence, um, he can play it a hundred different ways. And if you watch other people play, you'll see that, okay, they didn't take this route. They didn't stop and check the trunk of this police car. Um, and those are kind of like our treasure chests throughout the world. So you're always on the lookout for those because that's how you're going to find ammo and health kits. And then you're seeing one of our stealth mechanics here. If you're quiet, if you, if you crouch walk, and you walk up behind an enemy, then you have the opportunity for a stealth takedown. And what can you tell us about the Freakers? Because they're quite, quite unique. I and mean, we've seen you know, a fair few undead enemies in video games before. What makes the Freakers unique? And what, and what was your decision making behind making them the way they are? They're alive. They're alive. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're not zombies. They're alive. And so that, that, you know, that sounds trivial, but it's not, because it basically means we have a full day-night cycle in the game. Right. And they have, si they have things that they do. They have, there's an ecosystem. And they have to eat, they have to drink, they have to hibernate. And so you will find them, like in, in this scenario, you'll see that there's some nests, and Freakers build nests um, for reasons you discover while you're playing the game. And then you can take those nest zones out in order to free up fast travel routes. Um, so it you know, becomes part of the metagame. But Freakers are evolving. They're living right. creatures who have been affected by this, by this virus. And there's several different types. And some of our trailers you've seen, we've shown the Screamer, which is a female that can have sort of alarm system that will bring in more Freakers. Right. We have uh, the infected bear, so it, it, affect, it infects animals. In our last trailer, we showed the Mountain crows, lion and the crows. Right? So yeah. you have, yeah, so, the, you know, so it's just, it, it's a wide variety of challenges for the player. And like we said, the world comes for you, and that's part of it is that these creatures are always after you, and at night they're stronger. Yeah. If it starts raining, they become stronger. But we've seen him, I've seen in previous trailers uh, Deacon actually utilizing the Freakers as a weapon against his enemy as well. So you can actually use them to your advantage as well, as well as the environment itself. Yeah, absolutely. We call it the Freako system. So in this scenario, there's not a lot of chance for that. But if he were fighting marauders or rippers, right. then he could find a nearby swarm. It's an open world, so you can just explore. You can find other tools like you know, like a, like a swarm or a freaker bear, and you could bring them into an enemy right. camp and watch the, you know, watch the sort of mayhem that, that happens. I guess you've got to be careful, though. You don't you get kind of sucked right. into it. Yeah. <laughs> I like this gun, you guys. Well, so you have melee combat and you have gun combat. Can you talk about how you designed and balanced for both? The, uh, you know, it's like so many different scenarios require the player to determine how they want to play it. Right, so that's why we have like this full set of stealth mechanics. Um, we have a full set of weapons that you can upgrade, and you ha in order to do that, you have to go to the human encampment. So there's there's survivor encampments in the world, the only places in the world where it's safe, and you have to do jobs and missions with them in order to 
um, to earn trust. And then once you earn trust, the, the merchants there will sell you that. Ah, I like that. And then they, you know, it's like, and if you want to upgrade your shotgun or you want to upgrade or you want to buy a silencer for it, then you have to have enough trust at that encampment in order to do that. Boozer, you there? I found the part. I'm heading nope, got the bike part. He's so not this, having is the, a good time. this is the inside of the Crazy Willie's truck stop, and that's one of the other things we wanted Rippers. to point out is that it's full open world, but there is, you, it, there's a lot of exploration in the game. All of the building interiors are accessible. There's no load times to get in and outside of a building or to go between regions. This is in the Belknap Wilderness, um, and the whole area is just completely explorable. And then these are the Rippers that I mentioned earlier. So these are one of the cults in the game. These are dead symbols of a dead man. Dead symbols of the lost. Get off me! The bitches, Biker Man! You must be brought low, Biker Man. For you are lost, and we are found. Oh, yeah, that's gonna hurt. So you can see they're not very friendly. No. <laughs> You've talked about having freedom in terms of how you approach missions. So you can you can approach them stealthily. You can go in all guns blazing if you want to. Um, what kind of freedom do you have in terms of the mission structure? In terms of the story? Can you do you get to make story choices in the game, or is it like sort of like a linear narrative path you're going to be taking? Yeah, there's there's several key places where you have to choose. Um, what Deacon is going to do in a key situation. So we, re right. we released a bunch of footage last month, and if you watch carefully, you'll see that there's a moment where Deacon has the choice to take a man's life or to force Boozer to do it. Right. And that will have an impact on Boozer's morale. So your best friend, how he feels about you, how he feels about... So you tried doing sort of a stealthy approach, and now you're just going to go in with a shotgun and blow him away. Look at that hit shot. Or baseball bat, that works. Yeah. Can you tell us anything about what has happened in the world? You know, why are we in this post-apocalyptic situation? Like, are you able to reveal, like, kind of what, what has happened, what has led to this transition? Yeah, you know, it's one of those things that we really want the player to sort of learn as they go. So there are answers. Right. Um, but you have to explore. Uh, there's a, you know, we have, we, we've, we've introduced this group called Nero, which is our National Emergency Response Organization. They're out in the world. They have these MMUs that you're trying to right. um, break into in order to get medical supplies. They, they're part of the story. And, you know, obviously Deacon has lost somebody. We saw that in a trailer. That's part of the story. And as far as, like, the pandemic and the hordes that you run into constantly, th these all sort of weave together to, to sort of explain where how we got, you know, yeah. to this place in this world. Cool. Um, um, and all kinds of just visual, actual hardware upgrades, mm -hmm. but a ton. You can really make it your own. Awesome. Well, John, Jeff, Chris, thank you so much. Boozer have a run-in with R.I.P. the last couple of days? Why? One of my men escaped to Ripper camp, got tortured, like they always do. But this time they kept asking me if he knew about it. Two bikers, two men. The Ripper called them mongrels. You ask me, you got a price on your head. No same as me. Anything that happens here is far better than what's going on out there. Shit, get off! The hell? Perfect. <laughs> Just perfect. PlayStation.